All right, today we're going to be installing Design Hardware 1000V, or the vertical rod. So we're going to put it on the door with a key and lever. Key and lever trim simply is a trim that goes into the existing hole, two and an eighth, with a two and three quarter back set. Because your key and lever trim will go on a two and an eighth inch hole, two and three quarter back set. The panic itself comes with a filler plate for the edge and a filler plate for the strike. So it's an all in one package. Take the trim. You do have to have post holes drilled in it. A lot of your panics and doors already come pre-drilled with post holes. Put the key and lever trim in. And it will screw in place. As you slide the trim in, take the screws Come to the backing plate. You look at the backing plate. You want the rounded edge towards the door. Put that on. Then you just reinsert the two screws. Tighten them up. Lots of times I like to do this with a hand screwdriver. Nothing to it. It may take a little bit longer, but if you cross thread that thing and you start running it in there with your power screwdriver, it'll just strip them out or snap the screw heads right off on any kind of trim. So when you're doing smaller screws, it's just a good habit to be into to use a hand screwdriver on it. I'm going to screw this one in and hold it in place. Then we got one more to put on it. Okay. Screw it in nice and tight. You want to line the top one up. Do the same thing. Just screw it right in. Like I said, if you start them with a hand screwdriver, make sure you're going in nice and straight. I don't want to cross thread anything. Now with the 1000 panic device and this particular trim, the two post holes will actually act as through bolts. Once we get the panic put in and lined and installed in place, we'll have the post holes to run in there. And they have through bolts actually going from the trim then into the head of the panic. Just makes it a whole lot sturdier. It's another little nice feature of the 1000. Okay, there the key and lever trim is on and installed. Now we want to get the panic out of the box, get the instructions out, pull the panic out. Panic will have the head cover attached. Kind of just want to get everything laid handy. You got a whole little box of goodies here that comes with the panic. It's always nice to if you can push the door up against something, either like in this case we're going to open it 180 degrees. If you're working against a wall, maybe put a box down as a stop or something. Okay. Now we need to take the trim, the head off. There again, on any of these small screws, it's just a good idea to use a hand screwdriver. You don't want to strip them. You don't want to mar them up. It just looks a little more professional when you're done. And you can always get them back out, you know, chew them up. There's four screws that hold the trim cover on. Just make sure you hang on to all four of them. So we can put them back in. Now with the key and lever trim, it's a really easy application to just install it. The panic will slide right on to it. Set the head off somewhere. I like to take everything out of the little box so you can look at it. I said, this panic comes with the filler plates for the door edge and for the strike. It comes with a universal screw pack, so you won't use all of this stuff that's in here. It comes with lots of different applications. For our application, we're going to use the self drilling metal screws and the through bolts that came with the um, key and lever trim. You can go ahead and take this out. This is the end of the panic case with the bracket, and there again, it's all screwed together. So once you get out of the bag, you might as well take the three screws out of the back of it. You want to get it apart. Now these three screws are the exact same size as the screws that hold the head on. So you can mix them together that hold this trim case on. If you mix them together, it won't get anything confused. Lots of times what I'll do, since they are small, is go ahead and take the head, turn it upside down, put all seven of them in there. 
There's the three from the back. There's the four from the front. You'll need this bracket to attach the panic. Pretty simple at this point. We want to use the self-filling metal screws. Go ahead and get them out. Open them up so you can get at them. Everything out on the ground where it's easy to reach. Now there's a couple ways to do this. You want to make sure you got it good and straight. Some guys will use a plumb bob level or something like that. I will generally just take it. Now, to install the panic on the, on the key and lever trim, pretty easy. This is an X or a star-shaped sleeve that goes in this insert right here. All you need to do is line that up, slide it on, just like that. And you want to put a screw in there, hold it in place. Generally, one screw will get it for now. You want to kind of hold it on there. There you go. Now we're going to want to put the end cap on it. We're going to put the end cap on it. Take this bracket. Notice the end bracket has got two tabs on the bottom and one tab on the top. You want the two tabs. When you put them on the door, there's a notch in the panic. The two tabs will slide right between it. And then you want to slide it and screw it on. Now in this case, we've got holes in here from where we put it on before. If I were putting this on the door just to start with, what I would do, take a level. I'm going to set a level up on the panic bar itself. And then you want to bring it up till it's level and attach it. And after you attach it with the level, I always like to take it, go ahead and measure it anyway, just in case. Because if the door is swinging a little funny, it can still be off. So you want to measure here. And you want to measure over here. Make sure they're the same. 38 and a half, 38 and a half. We're good. Go ahead and put our second screw in there. Screw it up tight. Now you want to go ahead and you can put the rest of the screws into the head. You should have four screws screwed into the head. There you go. And then once you're done, go ahead and push the bar in. Make sure that your screws aren't obstructing anything. Everything still moves fine for you. Now I've got that bar on. We are ready to attach the brackets on the top. Okay. Now that you've got the bar attached, you want to go ahead and put the latch on the top and the latch on the bottom. Inside the box, you'll find the instructions with templates ready to go. So you can lay your template out. Your template on the top, you're going to lay out a line, find the center of your device. Now you put it in a standard doorknob hole so you're two and three quarters in, but you just want to check that. You want to measure in two and three quarters, put a line. And generally what I like to do, go ahead and put a long line up there, especially on a hollow metal door, it's going to get painted. Now if it's a wood door or something, you've got to be a little cautious, your marks don't show. On a hollow metal door, we'll just put a nice line there at two and three quarters. We'll go ahead and mark the bottom at two and three quarters while we're here. Mark the bottom at two and three quarters. Now you take your template. Your template's got a line on it that lines up with the top edge of the stop. So what you'll want to do, pull that door closed and then strike a line on it right across the top of the stop. And then go from that line. You can take your template and line it up on the center marks. What I always do and I'll take my razor knife and I'll cut a few slots in it so you can see through the template to line it up on your center line. Then you'll take it, line your template up on your center line, line it up on your line that you put across the top of your door that is the same line as the top of your stop, basically five-eighths of an inch down. You line that up and then you mark them. And I'll take those marks, and you want to go ahead and punch them. And I like to punch them and pre-drill the top hole. So on the top hole, we want to pre-drill that. So you put the bracket on. The bracket has got a slot in it. One large slotted hole, one small hole to set it. 
The top hole is this, is the slotted hole. If you mark that, it'll give you room to move that and adjust it up and down a little bit. Now the brackets for the top and the bottom latch are exactly the same. So you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. But if you look at the latch itself, the latch on the top is truly a strike. The bottom latch just merely has a hole in it for the rod plunger to drop through and drop into the floor or the threshold. So we're going to go ahead and put a bracket onto the top. Go ahead and hold that center in your hole. Kind of line it up. Now, you take your top strike, drop it in there. Kind of make sure it's all good to go. It'll all fit, all lines up. Now that'll hook on your strike on your door frame. Now that'll hook on your strike on your door frame. If you want to get in your box of stuff, you want to get your strike out. If you notice on your strike, it's got the same configuration. It's got two oval holes and one round hole. Now that strike will be center two and three quarters, just like everything else you've got going. So you can come over here to your door frame, measure from the frame, not the stop. And you want to measure two and three quarters in. And then that center hole to start with, you want to go back an inch and an eighth. So go ahead and measure that an inch and an eighth, mark that. You want to go ahead and put your strike on the door frame. When you install it, the screws go away from the door to the back. Run that up there. There we go. Now you want to take your door, we're going to close it real briefly for a second, make sure it clears. At this point everything is good, you want to make sure that that clears, the strike works, so you can go ahead and take that bottom screw, which runs through your housing, the screw runs through your housing and through your bracket. Go ahead and put that in. There you go. Now we're ready to do the same thing on the bottom. We'll attach, attach the bottom bracket and the bottom housing. Take your template. Same piece of paper used on the top, but it's clearly marked top latch, bottom latch. On the bottom latch, you want to mark this line in the bottom of the door frame. What I've done is I've cut that line with my razor knife so I can feel to make sure it lines up in the right spot. And I've got the grooves cut for my center line. So I'll take that, I'll hold it on my center line, then I'll slide it down until I'm even with the bottom of the door, and then I will go ahead and mark them. There we go. There again, I would center punch those and pre-drill the large slotted hole. Just makes it a lot easier to attach. Now you can go ahead and put the bottom bracket on, the one that just has the hole in it for the rod to drop through. It goes on, slides in, and then again the screw goes through it and through your first bracket. Now that those are both attached, we're ready to go ahead and attach the rods. Attach the rods to look at the rod. The rod has a threaded end and a non-threaded end. What you want to do, you want to start the threaded end up. You want to thread it on. I generally thread it up about halfway. You want to check this rod for length. In order to check it for length, you need to get back in your little bag of goodies. These are your end caps for your rods. They're half circles with a flat on one side and a little expansion anchor to hold it to the rod. For now, you can just slide it up there, hold it in place. See if it's going to fit. Now these rods have already been cut to length. It might be the case where you have to cut the rod off to make it work. If you need to cut the rod, make sure that you cut the rod on the non-threaded end. So I would always thread it in place. I would have it hanging there and then mark it to cut it. 
Oh, you're sure you got the right end. Now that we know we've got the right end on there, go ahead and unthread it. We've got this one cut to length. We're going to go ahead and put the end in it. The end cap goes in very simply. Slides right in the hole. Now you want to try to line the flat of the circle up with the flat of the rod. And you just need to run, there's a small set screw in there. Run that small set screw in tight. It'll tighten the whole thing up. Now if it didn't come out perfectly straight, you can always take a pair of pliers or a vice grip. Just turn it a little bit, get it to line up just how you want it. Now before you put it back on, you want to get in your little box of goodies again, and you've got a rod guide. The rod guide consists of two parts. The rod guide consists of a metal frame that screws to the door and a plastic guide that fits over your rod. You need to put your rod, plastic rod guide on at this time. Now it'll slide on either end. So you can drop it on and thread it in place, or you can go ahead and thread it on where you want it. Like I said, we were about halfway up on the threads before, so I want to be at about in the same spot. Thread it up on there. And we're ready to go. You want to take the screw out of the panic device. Then you want to put the black plastic part or the rod guide Go ahead and put it on at this time. You can always slide the cap on, the metal cap, later. So right now we want to slide the black plastic part up on the rod. And we want to go ahead and put the screw back in and attach the rod to the panic head. Get your piece of plastic out of the way. You got that on there, it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and put a couple screws in it, set it, just get it out of your way so it doesn't move. What I always like to do on my rod guides, I like to go 20 down from the top, and I like to go 20 up from the bottom. That measurement works on a 6.8 or a 7.0 door. Just an easy measurement to remember. And if you're doing like, you know, four or five of these in the building, everything's the same. It's going to all look good, look professional. And you want to take that, in your bunch of screws in your screw pack, you'll find two small self-drilling, self-tapping screws for metal. You want to simply slide that metal bracket over the black plastic insert, bring it up to your 20-inch mark, and screw it on. Now, once you screw that on, you want to check make sure you didn't bind that rod. You're all good. You want to have a little bit of movement in there. It wouldn't hurt to go ahead and hit the panic, make sure it's going to function for you. From this point on, every time you put something on this bar, you want to push it and make sure it's going to open and close. We're going to go ahead and install the bottom rod. There again, for the demonstration, this bottom rod has already been cut to length. But what you'll need to do, you're going to take the bottom rod. This is the bottom strike or strike bolt. It'll just drop into the hole in the bracket. Quite simple, just a gravity feed. There again, this rod has got a threaded insert on one side and non-threaded on the other. When you go to cut it, make sure you cut the non-threaded end. What I always like to do with these, to be safe, thread that on about halfway. And go ahead and put the nut up, just kind of draw it up snug. And I'll drop that in the hole you want to be about a half an inch below the bottom of the door from your connection point. This rod has the same kind of little fitting, really slick deal. Drop that in there, tighten that screw up. Very nice. And we'll take this screw off of here. We'll put a rod on. When your rod is attached, you want to be about a half an inch below the bottom of the door. Not the bottom of the bracket, but the bottom of the door. We'll go ahead and attach that. We can check it for distance. All right. 
And there again, like I said, you want to test it all. You want to test it. Make sure it all functions. Now, I forgot to put my rod guide on the bottom rod. Bottom rod, you got a couple of options. You can take these rod guides if you want to. You can pull the plastic insert out, take a pair of tin snips, and you can just snip it through there, and then snap it over the rod, and put the guide back on it. Since I'm on the bottom rod, and it's so easy to work with, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the screw out, just drop that guide on there, and set it from there. Look at that, right in the trim case, perfect. Slide the black guide on there, bring the rod back up, and reattach it. These rod guides are pretty important too. You don't want to forget them or leave them off because what they do is if this rod would get impacted, especially on the bottom, somebody wheeling a cart or a two-wheeler through here, UPS guy might tear that thing up. So you want to go back to your 20-inch mark. Remember, we're 20 inches from the bottom of the door to the center of the guide. That way everything's the same. Just remember that. Get in your screw pack. And we'll go ahead and set that, get it out of our way. Now with that guide in place, you want to feel a little, a little bit of wiggle room in that rod. And then there again, you want to go ahead and test it. Make sure it locks. And what I'm doing up here, I'm taking my thumb and I'm tripping that like I were hitting the strike and coming closed. That way I can test it, make sure it's working for me. I can trip it like it's closed, hit the bar like it opens. Now we've got the bottom rod on, we've got the rod guides on, we're set. We're ready to go ahead and put the trim cases on. I like to start with the bottom trim case and just work my way up. Just my own personal preference. Remember when you put these on, the small screws that put on the trim on the top and the bottom are different size than the screws for putting on the, the head trim. Slide that, line it up. I always like to put the little screws on with a hand screwdriver. Just makes it a little easier. You can line that up. Guide it right in there. Go ahead and screw it in. Don't think why it would be any different than it was on the first one. All right. Now you can take your bottom case, you can slide it on there. You can see the hole, line it up, put the screw in. There you go. There again, I will test this bar every time I put something on it from this point out. We've got that. Now, a lot of guys will close it and open it, close it and open it for the demonstration purposes. There again, I'm going to use my thumb up here. I'm going to trip it, make sure it all moves and functions well. You want to have a little bit of play in your rods. You want to make sure everything just kind of slips a little bit. A little bit of movement. It's good. And I go ahead and put the top case on. Snap it in place. You can line the holes up. You can see right through the case. Tell if everything's going to line up. Screw it right in there. I think it's just worth your effort to use the hand driver on these. You don't booger them up. And if you've got to take them back off again, you just want them nice and gently screwed in there. And it's not unusual to have to take something off and readjust this thing once you get it all the way going. Sometimes they can be sensitive. But in general, it's a pretty good piece of hardware. That snaps right on. And when you set all these on, we'll set the end piece on, the end cap.
and you're going to want to check it every time you put something to it. Except that end cap would be your one exception because when you put the end cap on, really no moving parts or anything back there. Looking good, everything still moves, jumps up and down. Put the end cap on. It just slips right on there. There we go. There again, you can slip it on. To be able to push it on far enough, you can see the holes. Screw it right in. So nice and easy on all these, you just need to snug them down. The guy's gonna use a power screwdriver on it. I guess if you set your clutch way back, you'd be all right. But this doesn't take that much time to put them in that way. Now, got all the trims on. The functions on the top are all good. I'm gonna give it one quick close, see how it goes. Works fine. That's how you install the 1000V panic bar from Design Hardware. All right, now that we've got the panic installed, the strike's set on with the screw. We want to make sure it all lines up nice. Pull the door closed. You can see it latches in place. And we'll just open it up. Hey, Brad, can you take that one more time? I gotta set the focus real quick. Now that we've got the door closed, you can tell that it all latches in place. The door's nice and snug. Now you don't want it too tight, it's gotta have a little bit of movement so nothing binds up on you. And you wanna take it, go ahead and open it up, get your strike set. You need to put the other two screws in place to hold it. Simply a matter of running your two large self drilling, self tapping screws. Hold it in place. There we go. Now it doesn't hurt to check it one more time once you got it in there. Just make sure nothing's shifted on you. Wouldn't mind, wouldn't, wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and check it one more time, make sure nothing's shifted on you. You can see it locks and strikes and everything works. And there you go. Now we need to do the bottom strike. The bottom rod drops in. If you got a threshold, something like that, you'll drill it, drop the rod and drop it in. Now in this case, for demonstration purposes, we're gonna put it on the wooden platform. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the door closed. And you wanna see where the rod drops. The rod will drop in. And you wanna mark that right where the rod is dropped onto the, it would be the threshold, the floor, in this case, like I said, it's the wood blocking. And you go ahead and open the panic up. Get it out of your way. The 1000V comes with a strike cover plate. You can put right on there. It's perfect for if you're drilling into, oh, say, a VCT floor or something like that, where you might damage the tile a little bit. You can drill your hole, and you can go a little oversized. Give you plenty of room for that rod to drop in there. And since we're going on wood, we're going to go ahead and use the small drive nails provided in the kit. You also have screws if you want to. If you're just going on a piece of aluminum or something, you want to screw that strike in. The small drive nails just drive right in. Very simple. Then you have a nice decorative strike there that'll cover any damage you might have done or not. Then you want to bring it in, you want to test it again. Bring the door closed, make sure the strike will drop in the hole. There you go. Good to go. Now, if it didn't fall in, you can always take that and do a little adjustment. Let's just say we just a little off or shifted on you. It's not going to hurt anything to take that. Wobble that out a little bit. You can even rub the edges of the strike plate back some. Go ahead and try it again. There you go. Drops right in. Open it up. That's it.